Good afternoon. Welcome to my Friday broadcast. Um, this is my daily chat. And I'm here to inspire you with some ideas and maybe challenge you with some topics as well. So today we're episode 757. And the topic today is, um, are, you a, are you a savior, a enabler, or something else? And I'll sort it was. Oops. <laughs> Either way, and the other one, I'll remember the other one in a moment. You're no hero, or in parentheses, Shiro, because I'm talking about men and women. It's both sides of the conversation here. Um, I'll, be, I'll explain that better when I get into it and, and give you some ideas and thoughts about it as well. But in the meantime, I'll introduce myself and give you a heads up of what this is about so it makes sense. My name is Barry Selby, in case you already didn't know that. Um, I am a relationship attraction expert, a, a, an inspirational speaker, and the best selling author, or the author of the best selling book. It's probably more accurate. <laughs> I'm not a bestseller myself. My book is called 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, which is a book for singles and couples about for healthy relationships. Um, and I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine and helping women create balance in love, life, and business, which is why I do these talks and why I help women. So, yes, a hero. I'm just looking at Marguerite. And by the way, this is my Facebook Live. This one, talking to somebody you can't see if you're watching somewhere else. And I'll explain all that at the back end. So today is episode 757. Uh, having done these talks now, called messages from the masculine, inspiring, feminine heart, for well over two years now, and I do these talks daily, every day, and I'll give you the, ins the information about that later on. The topic today is about the um, behavior that is a um, a savior. What do I call it? A savior, an enabler, and the third one's going to come back to me. Um, res rescuer. That was it. If you're doing any of those things, you're no hero. And I'll explain what I mean. Or Shiro for the women, because some women like to be called Shiro's versus heroes, just so you know. It's just a local thing for me. I, I am on a bit of a rant, it seems, over the last few weeks, especially in the last few months, about the topic of codependency. And this is another spoke in the wheel, so to speak, because in codependence, which actually is a clinically defined um, disorder, technically speaking, there's a, there's a wide spectrum. And so I want to speak to a couple of things that maybe you've done in the past or you've had done to you in the past that give you some clues of maybe where your relationships could be better. Because this is a key, by the way. When you understand this and you can see if you do if you do discover you relate to this, again, as the provider or the recipient, you can make a change. And so you don't have to keep doing it. So let me break this down. In relationships, primarily, this is, this is actually a relationship thematic conversation, which is why it's about relationships. And what sometimes happens is that you find yourself in the role as one option as the one is rescuing your partner as saving them as enabling their behavior so they can feel okay because otherwise you're letting them down or you're going to be judged or you'd be chastised or something like that that's the sort of wiring inside on the other side of the coin maybe you're someone who feels like they've always got to be saved by somebody else that someone's going to rescue you that frankly if they're going to love you, they'll enable you to do what you want. Both of these are the same are flips of are sides of the same coin. I was going to flip to my head. And the challenge for that is that people don't always know. Some people don't know they're always doing it. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Here's some clues I want to give you as an indication, because one of the things I'm very aware of with codependence as a topic or codependency as a topic is it is an enabler of bad behaviors. It's also an enabler of um, Puppet master attitudes. Um, I talked about the extreme case of this, which is the narcissist, which works in the arena of energy vampirism, as I call it, where they're sucking energy out of somebody else by using them for what they want. Codependency is kind of like that, only not so um, bloodlusty. <laughs> or, or not so bloody is maybe better way of saying it. So let me explain this more. It's nice in some ways to be the hero. I've, <laughs> I've been there, done that. I actually had a license plate on one of my cars many years ago. I had, a, I had a 1986 Toyota Supra, one of the first ones in the country, a white one. And somebody called me a white knight, and so I made a license plate out of it. If that isn't identifying yourself as a hero, I'm not sure what is. But I certainly didn't um, realize the pain I was going to pay, the price I was going to pay for that. Because what happened was, being the hero, I didn't really tell the story, but this is what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> okay, this is an interesting piece. I haven't talked about this for a long time, or actually before. So... I had a license plate in my car called White Knight. I, went, I was actually at a seminar workshop where uh, the feedback I got from one of the people in there was I was a White Knight. And I took it to I was like, that's cool. I like that. I'll take it on. Put the license plate in my car and I happened to have a white car. So it was kind of my stallion, so to speak. 
But the thing was, is every relationship I had pretty much after that, every date, every dating connection I had, end up being one where I kept saving the damsel in distress. I mean, almost literally. It wasn't, it wasn't literally that, but it was felt like it was. I grew up with women who needed to be taken care of, who needed to be saved, who needed to be rescued. And I felt like I was always being dragged down because I was not finding a partner who stand on two feet. Now, that was my experience. Not saying women are like that. It was my experience because I had actually put out to the universe and told the world, I'm a hero. I'm going to save the world. And so I, 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 I kept meeting women who needed saving. And, you know, perfect. This is one thing to talk about as well in my work is about how we have dovetailing patterns. If you have something on one side, the opposite fits in together. So it could be an abuse and abuser. It could be a hero and a victim. So there's different sides of this. So that was my experience. Now, you may have experiences that may be less blatant and maybe less, less, less um, identifiable. But the truth is, for many people, there is a tendency to save other people. And either you're the saver or the savee. So either someone's going to save you from what's ever happening or you've got to save somebody else to feel like you're worthy. Because what happens in the behavior I'm aware of is that when you are um, proving yourself as a hero, it gives you a sense of validity. Because somewhere inside, there's a missing piece about that. And so the wiring comes, the wiring's not there for, for being valid. So we have to do something to prove ourselves, to be, a, to be worthwhile, so to speak. And that worth is a key piece, by the way. One of the traps we fall into is thinking we're not worthy, so we're going to have to go do something to prove our worth in many different ways, including this one, which is all bullshit, to be very clear. Doesn't matter what your status in life is, doesn't matter what your, how much money you have in the bank, doesn't matter what your relationship looks like, doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter what your class structure is. Being physically born is more than enough to qualify you for being worthy. You are worthy, period. Not because of anything, not until something happens, not despite anything. You are worthy, period. And that's one of the things that people in codependent relationships don't understand. Because a lot of their codependency comes from this, this desire, this need to prove themselves worthy of being loved or to um, make the other person prove that they get to love. That's the other part, by the way. A lot of, a lot of codependency is actually manipulation subconsciously or consciously and it's a trap people fall into because that's the world the world tends to lean i've said this i use this quote all the time as the jerry Maguire quote about you complete me well if you complete me that means i'm not whole i mean you're not whole either that's not a valid statement it's actually nice and it's a romantic statement but unfortunately it's a codependent romantic statement it doesn't work i mean you can look for that one if you want but you're always going to be looking around always be looking for relationships that are incomplete because a relationship is not 50-50. And this is one of the chapters in my book, by the way, which I mentioned at the beginning. Relationships are not 50-50, they're 100 of 100 because none of us are half a person. Isn't, I mean, it sounds so stupid to say it that way. It's the truth. None of us are 50%. Even if you're short or tall or wide or if you're fat or thin, you're still a whole person. It's not physical size, by the way, in case you figure that out. So in a relationship, it's not 50-50, it's 100-100. A relationship is 200%, not 100%. So when they say complete me, it's a lie. It's a fake. It's not true. And so the codependent paradigm is a made-up excuse to avoid responsibility. Actually, yeah, it's true. I didn't plan that. It came through. And so when you're in a place where you're being codependent, it's because you're not willing to take full responsibility for your beingness, for your wholeness, for the truth of who you are as a worthy person, because you already are. That's the thing about, about this stuff. There's nothing, nothing to prove. You already are this. So the desire to go prove something to prove your worth, to prove your heroism, to prove your um, savior skills is messed up. It's simple as that. If you're doing things like that, there's a part of you that is not sure. No, no, it's another way. I saw it, but I can frame it. If you are running the pattern of hero or savior, especially, then you're carrying the um, false belief that you're missing something. And that missing something is a false belief you've had either you either got put in by somebody else or you put in yourself that is keeping you off the, the track of being whole and worthy and fully truly who you are because that's the truth of who you are. So if you're in a place where you're not getting that straight, um, 
and again it could have become could have come from somewhere you were raised this way or in your programming not pro runs the word to use but your inbuilt beliefs that basically programming from your childhood then it's a good time if you're watching this and you get this makes sense to you to get some real help to get some guidance some coaching some counsel from somebody like myself who can help you to sort this out so you no longer carry around the burden and the illusion of not being worthy and also you then learn that you don't need to find, make other people feel worthy they don't have to you can remind them of it but you don't have to save them and there's no need to be a hero and again from what i said in the past no need to be a hero oh and by the way a little, little part two of that story <laughs> i can laugh about it now um as I said, I had this white supra and I was the white knight, so I had all these relationships. And when I started realizing how I was defining my role in the world to be hero to save these women in relationship, I said, enough. Now, <laughs> I want to make this, make this point clear. It's important when you state something, you make it clear, directive, so the universe knows what you're saying. I basically said, when I got clear that it was enough, that I need to get rid of the car. I said, I'm done with it and I, I, I need to get rid of the plate excuse me, I need to get rid of the license plate because I don't, I don't want to keep carrying the white knight burden around. Less than two weeks later, my car got stolen with the plate on it. <laughs> I mean, it sucked at the time. It was my baby. It was my, my pride and joy. It was my first new car I bought. No, second new car I bought, actually. But I was so clear that I wanted to be done with it. The universe responded that quickly without actually me qualifying what I wanted. So, one, be careful what you ask for because <laughs> it could be very well happen. And secondly, be clear what you want to be about. Do you want to be a whole worthy person? Excuse me. Do you want to remember that you're a whole worthy person? Or do you want to play in the illusion of being a hero or a savior or some sort of victim? Because you're going to be, if you want to be saved, someone else has to be the hero, you're going to be the victim. Or the damsel in distress if you're a woman. The man in distress? I don't know, it doesn't work the other way around, but that's the, that's the, that's the fairy tale fantasy thing I'm talking about here. So my point here is very simple is if you fall into the trap of looking to help somebody out by saving them you can help somebody out by serving that's different but if you think by saving them thinking that you're the big person that's gonna make them feel better and you're making them feel better that's the trap right there you're making them do anything is where the trap is that's the languaging that's the understanding you start feeling that by being a hero you're gonna make them safe you're gonna make them feel better that's the trap of codependence excuse me codependency i keep forgetting is a why on the end so if you're not really clear about what that is, this is one way of detecting it. And when you do know what that is, then you can change your whole paradigm because what's going to happen when you do that, is you start realizing you don't need, to, don't need to enable anybody, even family members, even your children, even parents. It's not about that. You can support them, you can serve them, yes. But if you're trying to save them, now let me do a quite slight caveat. If you happen to be in a major um, car accident with somebody and you save them by pulling from the wreckage, that's, that's well and good. I'm not talking about that. And it's about when you save somebody emotionally because you feel like it's your job to do that. Be very careful that you're not falling into a place where you don't think they can do it for themselves. My work as a coach, one of my clients, is not to fix them. It's to actually help them remember to fix themselves. It's actually very empowering because my work is not about me being the hero. My work is about helping you be your own hero of your own life. Loving yourself, appreciating yourself, and supporting yourself to be the, be the truly amazing, authentic, worthy person you really are that's the power of really good coaching it's actually the only way to do it right in my book so i think i made my point i've been talking about this a lot especially the last few days i'm actually putting together my um, weekly email to go to my email list and i'm realizing that this whole thing as i'm talking about i actually titled it the elephant in the room which is about codependency i've it's come up a lot this week in my talks because it's becoming really front and center in my work with my clients because that's the trap most of us are falling into the flip side of that, from what I can tell, the current language I'm calling it is self-mastery. When you learn self-mastery, you're no longer codependent because you don't need anybody else for anything. You can enjoy other people, but you're not, not tied to other people, and that's freedom. And freedom is where the joy is. If you want an amazing relationship, start with that. So if you want to find out more how to work with me, I'll put a link in the comments besides my book I mentioned at the beginning. I'll put a link in the comments for a, for a clarity conversation with me so we can talk about what's going on for you and see if we want to work together. And I'll give you some insights along the way so if you don't want to work with me, you'll, have some, you'll walk away with some value. Um, that's a one-time offer to people, by the way. If you want that, that link will be in the comments as well. And also, I'm going to drop a little hint in here as well. 
my new course coming home to my new group program called coming home to yourself which is really self mastery in disguise is really where this all comes together so if you're interested in that I'll put the link in the comments for that as well so you can check it out that isn't starting yet um, I'm still getting people sign up for it so you can go to the, the sheet check it out and then sign up and have a conversation with me, with me about that um, I think that's about it codependency is a it's not a disease but it's a paradigm that we need to climb out of it's not where we belong so I've been using a lot banding around for one of my teachers I call it interdependence because when we have interdependence we are independent and able to interact without being requiring the other person to make us feel whole that's the difference and I'll help you with that if you're stuck if you want some help again links are being in the comments and I think that's going to be about it I appreciate you being with me by the way as I said before this is my Facebook live I do every day of the week seven days a week at 5 p.m. Pacific time unless something changes um, and it goes up my personal page on Facebook which is Barry Selby my business page which is Barry Selby author is where my replays get stored please like my page and also I have a YouTube channel called Barry Selby surprisingly because all my, t all my social media is my name please like please subscribe to my YouTube channel which is Barry Selby the playlist is called messages from the masculine and I think that's about it I appreciate you being with me and I hope this has made some sense to you and if you do feel like you've been a hero too much it's a good sign maybe you need to stop with that I thank you for watching I'll see you again tomorrow same time same channel and uh, take care of yourself I'll see you again soon bye